Welcome and thanks for joining us for this episode of Scope. Prime Minister James Marape officially opened the Wabeg Maramuni Road section of the Inga Sipik Highway at the Pasalago Station, Maramuni LLG, on Friday, the 1st of April 2022. It will be remembered as the dawn of a new day for the people of Maramuni. The occasion commemorated the official opening of three significant initiatives of the Wabeg District Development Authority, the Maramuni Road, Maramuni Health Center, and Enga Sipik Highway. Witnessed by the people of Maramuni LLG, a few members of parliament, residents of Wabeg Town, and government officials from Port Moresby. Prime Minister James Marape officially opened the 50 km section of the Enga Sipik Highway at Pasalago Station in the Maramuni LLG on Friday, the 1st of April, 2022. Thank you, thank you. God bless. God bless Maramuni. God bless Maramuni. Within the Marape led government's Connect PNG plan, this section from Maramuni will continue for another 45 kilometers, connecting into the Sipic River Plains within the Uat LLG of the Angaram District. The project development is led by the Wabeg District Development Authority in collaboration with the National Department of Works and Highways and the Provincial Works Unit. Funding support came from DOWH and the Department of National Planning and Monitoring. A total of 18 million kina was allocated over the last three years for this greenfield road. 10 million kina is allocated in the 2022 budget to fully complete the road with a further 8 million kina to be used for the startup of the Marumuni Sipic section of the highway. The Prime Minister noted that given the terrain and new areas to cut through, the project needs an additional 50 million kina to see a well-constructed road. The Provincial Works Unit did the construction works through day labor contracts with supervision. Road works from Sirinki intersection to Maramuni took over four years. In his opening remarks, Wabeg MP and Minister for Fisheries and Marine Resources, Dr. Lino Tom, acknowledged Prime Minister Marape, invited heads of state and government agents for being present to witness this milestone event for the people of Maramuni. Today you saw in Papua New Guinea Osem. All line will stop on bus. All part of the country will call in Papua New Guinea. In all line long hospitals, all in all line long agent as all in all line long wabek now all town areas. All line where you look him now all Sirang go sem. All sleep long place to talk. All no kissy many government service. But you saw him content long you now you saw him now you talk him all. This la passing where you make him now long come long rural. Maramuni. I'm saw him or sem. This la government. I'm government long, everyone, and yeah. everyone including my man of Minister of Works and Implementation Michael Nali told the people of the support his department has received from the government and all ministers and members on the floor of parliament. Minister Nali is satisfied and happy as Minister for Works that every process and law regarding road construction in the country have been followed. He said this government has made amendments to the Road Management Act of 1973, now known as the Road Management Act 2020. The government has committed 5.6% of the national budget to go towards building of roads and infrastructure. Minister Nali said by 2023, the government would fully utilize the 5.6%, which is 1.3 billion kina of the total budget to building roads. During the government budget proposals, he has had a special interest for rural roads and Maramuni is one of them. As the Minister for Works, 700 million kina has been transferred from the Department of Works to the rural roads, district and provincial roads. Almost 98% of the country's population are found in the rural areas. In the past, it would take the people about a week to walk to and from Maramuni. Now they can jump on a vehicle and travel for just a couple of hours to get to their respective villages. Maramuni area shares borders with parts of East Sipic. 
As of April 1st, both Dr. Tom and member for Angaram Salio Waipo officially launched the construction of the Engasipic Highway, adding that this economic route will benefit the rest of the highlands as well. MP Waipo thanked Dr. Tom, the Anga Provincial Government, the National Government and the Prime Minister for their endless contributions to make this dream come true for the people of Maramuni and the longer stretch of the network into his electorate. He added that he has already begun planning and mobilizing resources and support for the extended road and river network services from the UART LLG into Angaram Station and into WeWork to finally join in the Sipic Coastal Corridor under the PNG Connect program. When this connection is finally made, the people of East Sipic and Anger will enjoy a new era of trade and relations that had existed from time immemorial. Now, and by bringing me black close to more long, system blow off. Now you like run on lay coming up and costing me black people money through the current container. You come like Angoram, the people of Wolf stop like Now you run it come here, you take you some. Three or four hours, let you stop in Wabek. In thanking all stakeholders, the Prime Minister applauded the member for Wabek, Dr. Tom, and his administration for keeping steadfast to this important investment. He encouraged the people of Maramuni to acknowledge great leadership in Dr. Tom and continue to support his vision. He added that with the development of this road, there will be more opportunities coming into this once forgotten part of PNG and therefore must work hard to be part of the development and services that can come through agriculture, alluvial mining and tourism. We look so long stable you and your partnership, not just with Mibla government, but more importantly, sub-regional partnership between you and member of Lohabek, my governor of Langa province, my governor of Long Isipik, a very important partnership that he run, we like this partnership run together at least for the next 10, 15, 20 years. The PM added that there are those who do not want to link with the Highlands Road and that it is not constructive thinking. In saying this, the Prime Minister directed the Ministry of Tourism, Art and Culture to assist the Wabeg DDA with 1 million kina to facilitate the development of a cultural centre and to set up tourism facilities and products within the area in order to benefit from the pristine fauna and flora attractions that Maramuni has to offer. Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture E.C. Henry Leonard, upon his chopper ride over the beautiful mountain ranges of Enga province to what was once entirely an extremely remote area, saw potential in culture and tourism and said his trip to this remote area was not by accident. Minister Leonard encouraged the people they have a road that removes some challenges and creates opportunities in schools and health services. There are many opportunities for each and everyone no matter where they are for business, agriculture and also tourism. He saw potential for tourism and cultural shows and environmental programs in the traditional dress, dance and geography of cascading waterfalls and mountain peaks covered in clouds that portrayed a scenic view. This year, under the Marapilet government, a budget of 20 million kina was given to TPA and Minister Leonard encouraged the people of Maramuni to collaborate with his ministry so they too can benefit from this budget and grow Maramuni through tourism and cultural shows. Maramuni LLG is one of the three LLGs of the Wabak district comprising of a population of about 20,000 people and had only been accessible to the outside via air and traditional walking tracks to Wabe in four days and the Pacific Plains in three days. When we come back, landowners get first LNG payment. March 10 was a historic day for the Papua New Guinea liquefied natural gas landowners in Hyde's Petroleum Development, License 7 in Hela Province. It marked the first payment of royalty and equity payments in the area since the first shipment of PNG LNG export in 2014. A total of 19.6 billion was paid to upstream PNG LNG project land owners of Petroleum Development License 
PDL 7 in Hela province, a combined royalty and equity of 49.2 million kina was received by MRDC, of which 40% cash component of 19.6 million kina was paid into the clan account, while 60% or 29.5 million kina is being retained for future generation trust and community infrastructure trust fund. The combined royalty and dividend payment is a significant milestone for the green fields. This is the first time beneficiaries from an upstream PDL area have received the cash benefits from the PNG LNG project. Last year, 18 months ago, we passed that law. Tails, red, locky, gory, the population of segment 6, segment 5, now we become long. Last, the segment 3, Two, the one two is a little lava. And the last program we've been starting from 18 months ago, the people have finished. Once we've been finishing, everybody will start again because now we have open our accounts and open law. Segment one, two, eight. So if I easy for benefit like go. So people something. Tomorrow, you can go to work Sunday. Monday, lottery. The PDL 7 landowners are the first PNG LNG project greenfield license area beneficiaries to receive their royalty and equity benefits, following payments already done to PNG LNG plant sites and pipeline landowners. MRDC Managing Director Augustine Mano believes this would pave way for speedy conclusion to the lobby process for heights PDL-1, PDL-8 in Angore, and PDL-9 in Juha, so that benefits for landowners there can also be rolled out. Mr. Mano praised the PDL-7 landowners for their patience, despite the long wait for the benefits after the first shipment of the liquefied natural gas in 2014. Most law, 500,000 or 400,000 law, hello, I need to talk. This law money, no one buy bullet, no one buy gun, no one buy none of that. And blessing from big man, so you look look for school fee. Now look look for me, for you, for outline, what you must know about. Now put you, and the blessing gun. Blessing for you, now you need to talk it. Me and my son, I'm going to be now. You know, when I die, you got you. And my son was not here. And you make my fight, you are losing fight. That one you are respecting me, and seven you are respecting me. And me for something. Leadership and you are not so me. And encouraging you are not only one more to my father and family. All right. On 16 September, me ask him, the Marnisi, the head of the government by Putin, carry one blow more, how many blow more, how many blow more, how many blow more. All right. And on 16 September, and me blow by kind of funding law. CITF money by you now. What we have this in our you know and pay 40% law entitlement for you. 30 percent law but this is finished, and by the investment law, look look law, future, time gas now and finish, and 30 percent by back up for you now. Now now that 30 percent is not for working projects. And also now by look law, look look law, and then one more class look law. Can you have to come or working from doing something common sense law? This law is not for commitment for you now. But otherwise, I'm telling every day of the big man, big man, blessing. This is a real thing that you can do, and blessing the big man. The Heights, PDL 7 land owners thank the government and concerned stakeholders for releasing the overdue royalty and equity payment in early March. Umbrella Heights PDL 7 Association Chairman Eric Ako Hawaii praised the government and all concerned stakeholders' efforts in finalizing and finally paying out landowners' dues. However, he said there are some issues they must correct before future payouts. A Croton 4.27 must be given in a case component to compensate the loss for the, um, the royalties that landowners for PDL 7 receive. Because PDL 1 will be the same too. And PDL at Angora, and PDL 9 and Jua will be the same all alone. So we need to correct for PDL 7 and then those deductions 
and remain growth on 4.27 equity must be paid the board and management must be set up before the elections and those payments must come in the form of cash so that those angry landowners can also benefit now that we've gone from going the reality part of it and I think that's fair for government for the developer and for landowners too in stressing on the removal of 28% royalty component, Mr. Hawaii said the rightful landowners of the resources have been marginalized and the 28% of what is rightfully theirs was given away to plant site and pipeline landowners. He said according to Oil and Gas Act, royalties are only paid on wellhead value. PDL 7 block leaders are aggrieved that payment was not done fairly. They strongly believe that pipeline and plant site landowners are only entitled to rental. Although the government and MRDC focus on royalties, some of the issues also apply to the distribution of other benefits associated with resource projects. Meanwhile, MRDC urge clans and families receiving the cash benefits to use the money wisely. Landowners have been challenged to invest in small businesses to grow the money or save for their children's education in future. Putting revenue from non-renewable resources like gas into long-term investment is important as these investments will provide the income to sustain their livelihood once the PNG LNG project comes to an end. After the break, Boeing Border Post, a milestone achievement for the autonomous Bougainville government and the PNG Immigration and Citizenship Authority. Border posts are important for the country for both trade and security. The autonomous region of Bougainville established an immigration office in Boyne, South Bougainville, a milestone achievement for the autonomous Bougainville government and the PNG Immigration and Citizenship Authority. Chief Migration Officer Stanis Hulahau said the establishment will play a key role in securing the region's borders from unscrupulous activities that may threaten national security. Boyan Town and its people have set themselves up to be custodians of international border security in the autonomous region and Papua New Guinea as a whole. On the 10th of February 2022, the PNG Immigration and Citizenship Authority launched the opening of South Bougainville's International Immigration Office in Bowen. It was recognized as a significant event since PNG received its independence in 1975. This is the first time in history that an immigration office has been set up in this part of Papua New Guinea. Chief Migration Officer Stanis Hulahau, in his opening remarks, said the ICA is a fairly new organization in the history of PNG's bureaucracy, having transitioned as a division from the Department of Foreign Affairs and International Trade in 2010. Since then, the authority has come a long way considering all its achievements. As the Chief Migration Officer responsible, I have undertaken a comprehensive review on our business process and we look at ways to conduct business in a more efficient and effective way to bring our core services to where our people are. And the launching of the Buin office today signifies that view. It's about bringing the service to our people rather than our people coming to us or coming to Waigani for service. Mr. Hulahau said the Boeing International Office sits directly on the corridors of our borders at the northern tip of this region, which is one of the gateways to the Pacific Island countries. Hence, its operation will play a key role in securing our borders from unscrupulous activities that cause a threat to national security and welfare of our people. Now that we have an office here, there will be constant compliance and monitoring activities alongside our border border and treaty villages to ensure we enforce our relevant laws and other relevant statutory, uh, statutory laws including 
ABG laws and regulations as far as the borders are concerned. Mr. Hullahaus said he was pleased to announce that work has commenced on the amalgamation of other significant functions into the PNG Immigration and Services Authority, such as the merging of the work permit from the Labor Department this year. He is thankful for the support of the government of the day to ensure they create a one-stop shop hub for migration-related services. There are plans for more regional consultation and border, border visits this year to identify challenges and opportunities to progress where PNG Immigration and Citizenship Authority can work together with ABG. Australian High Commissioner to PNG Jonathan Philp was guest of honour. In his opening remarks, he said that Australia had only one close border with Papua New Guinea in the Torres Strait, but Papua New Guinea, as we know, has three with Australia, Indonesia and Solomon Islands. We consider it's extremely important to work with Papua New Guinea on our shared border area and to try and understand how we can make life easier for the traditional inhabitants who like to travel across that border between our two countries. Mr. Phillips said that to be able to conduct not just traditional business, but the kind of commercial relationships and business keeps the communities on both sides of the borders prosperous and continue to grow. So we're very keen to keep working together with the Ministry of Immigration of Papua New Guinea to understand how we can work to facilitate all those cross-border travel, but to do so in a way that is controlled and managed appropriately in the interests of all our three countries. ABG Minister for Police, CS and Special Economic Zones, Emmanuel Carlos Caetavara, encouraged the people and government to realize the importance of such a partnership and to remember that border crossing is everyone's responsibility. Mr. Caetavara said that they have observed the recent instability across the border and how it impacts Bougainville on its path to progress in readying itself if they are truly to become an independent nation. Now this is like a partnership where people are continuing to enjoy with the national government to have this as a focal point. The South Bogan is a focal point, the border, crossing immigration, and we play important something through Bougainville. Now people, people of the South, people must look out him, now people must support him. The community level, border crossing, and the business blame your local man Mary. The national level, border is important, the economy blame your place, people are progress. No one can something by come across. Local Inspector of Police and Station Commander John Popui said that way back in 2003 up until today, there were no extent of customs and immigrations and his police officers were acting as immigration officers and customs officers who dealt with border crosses. The Solomon Islands and uh, Papua New Guinea border. We have uh, issues where the locals along the coastline very concerned about uh, the treatment of our local people from Bougainville, especially uh, fishermen. Therefore, um, um, migration and custom officers uh, who will be uh, based here in Buin and South Bougainville, uh, we will work together, police, customs and uh, immigration. On behalf of his people, local MP and Minister for ICT, Timothy Massieu, thanked the Waymakers for a progressive people and government. He will walk in this plan because he may like him, this plan progress, he must continue. And we must continue to come out because he may got this plan timeline is tough. Timeline of independence, he may plan talk, 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 level, blah, me plan. Negotiations are taking place, consultation is taking place, and we are all talking at that level to see what is the best way that Mibla can progress in this plus something. Minister Masseur said he was happy for Buen Town having a critical government service infrastructure that would manage international border movements. Buen International Immigration Office is now one of three international border establishments within Papua New Guinea. These border posts are important for the country both for trade and security. Relatives and friends coming from Solomon Islands and even those of us from Bougainville and other friends traveling to the Solomon Islands can travel with the legally valid travel documents to sell or buy and service on, on both sides of the border. Minister Masu told Minister Nakunj and ICA's CMO that through this infrastructure, they will have the means to enforce immigration controls 
and will need to do this to enforce their national and border security amidst common challenges like transnational crime, drug and weapons trafficking, terrorism, human trafficking and illegal immigrations. He added that the border post adds to the many other projects initiated by the marpa led government. Minister for Immigration and Border Security Wesley Nakunj was only happy to be officiating the opening of Boone's International Immigration Office as a way forward in bringing the service of the national government right to the people's doorsteps. Immigration Department, and by law, only set them up 10 years ago, Long Emmy stand up, come up or Sam, gateway long all, all Narbla Kalaman, or Long Narbla country, Logoi come, Long country, you mean, and making work business, or tourist, or kind of Sam, and all back him. Crazy Mr. Department 10 years ago, Long Mibla stand up gateway long, all by come Long country, you mean. Minister Nakun said that the purpose of the office was not only to protect the borders, but also to make it easier for the Bougainville government. We sat low here, Miss Avi Olsem, to lo understand the Tula government by a sample free trade zone or sample business activities by come up low here. But foreign investors by come. But how about you making more paper work? Only no local most bit as well by making low here. So me like some services come low door. You like some foreign investors come low here or free trade zone. And that ends scope this evening. A kind reminder to apply simple measures to prevent the transmission of the coronavirus. Regularly wash your hands with soap and water, cough or sneeze into your elbow, and exercise social distancing. If you are feeling sick, please stay at home. You can also call the COVID-19 hotline number for more information or assistance. Thank you for your company. Bye for now.